Hi everyone and welcome back to our Simple Abundance Year. My name is Carolyn and you're here with me for our 2020 journey through Sarah Von Braunick's book, Simple Abundance. If you're watching real time, it's August 25th, 2020. And in today's entry in the new book, we've been going through her 2016 edition. She talks to us about how she wanted to be an actress. We learned that recently. And, and also tells us that her daughter kind of went on to carry the flame of that. And we know from the entry about Sarah and the convent that she didn't really like the actor lifestyle because there was a lot of rejection and political issues with casting and things like that. So if I think about Sarah's principles, joy, harmony, beauty, order, simplicity, and gratitude, that's what we're talking about here this year. I guess this entry is most aligned with joy because she is talking to us about the joy that she had from performing. Uh, and also it ties into the story uh, of, um, well, uh, to the topic of stories, I should say, because we've been talking about books. We're going to have a couple entries about film as well. So, and the roles that we play, right? So it ties in in that respect, but I didn't feel like a huge resonance with the message. It was basically just a story of, of how her daughter became an actor later and, and so I wanted to use today's time to talk to you about an entry that's in Sarah's old book, The Day Book of Comfort and Joy, written in the 90s. And I mentioned this one to you guys when I did the August Joyful Simplicity talk at the beginning of the month. And I have an important question for you. And here it is. If not now, when? Oh my goodness. This could mean so many things, right? And you know I'm reading The Power of Now, so that is a great tie-in with living in the now. But I wonder if when you hear that phrase, if you're thinking more about, like, if I'm not doing something now, then when am I going to do it? Or why not now, in other words, right? Like, why wait to the future? And I mean, there's so many ways you could think about it, because... If you're asking if not now, when, then maybe you do have something that you're working towards and and it's about goal setting. So it's like something in the future, but really I think at least my take on it is it's it, because Sarah actually, when she introduces it in this entry from the old book, she does talk about it in terms of procrastination. Now, since this book was written, or actually, I take that back because this book was written in the late 1990s, but I looked up online because I just looked up the words, if not now, when. This was actually something said, I mean, a long time ago by, and I don't even know how to say her name, Hiele, H-I-L-L-E-L, Hiel. it's a Jewish name. And she was an elder. Okay, so that that's what the quote is attributed to. But I also found that there's a 1986 book named that as well. And again, it's related to the Jewish culture. So there is a movement. You can look that up. In fact, I even found something about 2020 where the movement is now... I didn't look into which party they're supporting. But it was something about getting people out to vote and having the Jewish voice heard. But Sarah doesn't mention that in this entry. She talks about this term in terms of procrastination. Like, what are all the reasons that you're waiting to do whatever it is you want to do? She says, procrastination is the thief of time. That's a quote from Edward Young. So that's what she's talking about in terms of this story. And then, let's see. Life, as it is called, is for most of us one long postponement. <laughs> That's Henry Miller's words from 1947. What pleasure are you postponing? I just postponed joining a fabulous book club. That's Sarah's words, I think. I'm going to call my busy friend back 
it's faint, but I can still feel a pause, a pulse. Okay, so I'm sorry, I didn't read you the whole entry, but she did talk about how her friend is going to start a book club and that she was too busy to join, but I think she wanted to do it, so she's just giving us that little tidbit at the end there. So that could be attributed to anything. Like, if you've been waiting to do anything, what's the wait? Like, even if you're waiting to be happy, there's so many things that hold us back from that. And what our idea of happiness is. And it's like, we have to attain certain things. Or it's like, I'll be happy when this happens. Or we're putting other people's happiness before our own. And there's something to be said for that. It's wonderful to care for other people. But if you're unhappy because you're making someone else happy, there's got to be a balance in all things, right? <laughs> I wanted to read a couple quotes I printed out from The Power of Now that I'm reading, okay? So in terms of living in the now, that's what I'm exploring in this revisit of The Power of Now book by Eckhart Tolle. I've been listening to it on audio and I feel like I'm going to have to listen to it two or three more times because every time I'm listening to it on a walk and I just go, wow. You know, it's just so many profound statements and I feel like he's really talking to me personally because uh, he has this conversation between, there's a male and a female voice that ask various questions and, and bring up pretty relatable blocks to living in the now that I feel like you know, like I said, like he's speaking to me or I could be one of those voices asking him questions. So this is, this is kind of at the heart of the whole thing. Realize deeply that the present moment is all you have. Make the now the primary focus of your life. Because in the book, he brings forth the statement that guess what? Now is all there is. Yes, we know that there was a past and we know that there was a future, but we're only ever in the now. Now, energetically and potentially in our minds, we can go in either direction, but at least at this point in human existence, we have not mastered the art of time travel. What a new life that will be <laughs> if we get to that point. It will really cause us to question a lot of these things like what is the now and yeah let's just not even go there yet but wow the future sure probably will have a lot more things than we can even imagine right now in this moment but if you're living in the now and that's all there is then that is the primary focus right it's not easy. I'm working on it, but it's not easy. All negativity is caused by an accumulation of psychological time and denial of the present. These are again Eckhart Tolle's words. Unease, anxiety, tension, stress, worry, all forms of fear are caused by too much future and not enough present right? Like anxiety, we talked about this, that you're just so worried about what's going to happen. Guilt, regret, resentment, grief, sadness, bitterness, and all forms of non-forgiveness are caused by too much past and not enough presence. So I wonder if you can relate to either the things that he qualified as being in the past or things in the present or maybe it's about equal any of those things that you may be having that take you out of this now now this is not to say that like say you are in grief you can be present with that grief for sure and the grief may have to do with something from the past but there are things that you can really be really sitting in in the presence right in the present it's important to honor those things that you have in the present but just like we talked about in other videos about 
especially with the anxiety and like what are the chances of this worry even coming true it's like how much time in the present have you lost to worry or to going back to the past with not forgiving or something like that how much of your present now is being negatively affected by those things something to think about right and then in terms of this statement you know like if not now when like what's stopping you like think about Sarah she wanted to be a writer but it, it was it took for her to get into the right circumstances and feel like she was accepted by the other writers and to to just finally be like okay now I'm a writer <laughs> Sometimes you don't need that validation. You're the artist of the everyday, remember? She had us exclaim that. So whether you're waiting to tell the world that you're a poet or a musician, an actress, anything. Just that you're even living authentically. Like, I'm Carolyn! <laughs> like, you don't have to wait to do that. Can do it now and in terms of action there is one other thing from Eckhart it says any action is often better than no action especially if you've been stuck in an unhappy situation for a long time if it is a mistake at least you learned something in which case it's no longer a mistake if you remain stuck you learn nothing that's making me think about the book that I brought out for you guys a couple months ago, the Get Unstuck, Be Unstoppable book. <laughs> I have a kitty. I forgot to say that's why I'm sitting here again. Um, the afternoons are her sunbathing time and she has this spot that she likes to sit in, so she's been enticing me over to come and spend time with her. Anyway, if you're stuck, you could be stuck in the now, too. That's true. Like I was saying, if you're ruminating on some feelings, you can take some action. Remember when I talked about Tony Robbins when we were talking about the morning and evening uh, routines? He has some things. Sorry, she's rubbing up against the tripod. Um, he has some physical things that he'll do like if he's getting into a state where he's like starting to like spiral into negative thinking or something he just he'll just be like ah! you know like he'll just like do some sort of like screaming or like pounding on his chest I mentioned that at one point so Eckhart says like take some kind of action right so if you're stuck and you take action it could be a mistake or it could be a gift either way you'll learn from that but if you stay stuck then you never learn and you never grow I should do a video on transformation because that word has just been coming up in so many things that I'm seeing and I like to think that we're all transforming especially through this experience of simple abundance I'd like to think I'm transforming as opposed to my life falling apart, like I said <laughs> recently. I'd like to think that it's just transformation symptoms <laughs> and, and evolving and elevating more towards higher consciousness. When I'm feeling good, like right now, in this moment, I am feeling good. And when I'm feeling good and I am reconnecting with myself and recognizing who I really am then I do feel much more connected to higher consciousness and so much is about going through this book again with you guys and and reading the new entries and just talking to you every day this month has been a lot I was telling a friend that as much as I've enjoyed coming to see you guys every day, once September comes and I'll be back to my two or three day, you know, time frame. So uh, you won't have to see me every single day, but I do feel like if I was not doing this, then 
I think I would be I would be even more caught up in all the things that you know have been challenges for the last 12 months or so so I'm glad you're here I'm thinking of Annabelle my kitty she's here with me uh, and how we talked about how animals they're always in the now I mean they might be thinking about their future meal or something but they're just content to just take in the Sun like she is and yes you love having me right here with you <laughs> she's licking me uh, so the animals can definitely help us with the now and if there's something that you're thinking about doing and you are just not doing it then think about that question if not now when make a plan or why not just do it like Eckhart said if you do it and it's a mistake then at least you learned from it right so do it and in the joyful simplicity that she mentioned about this poster she said to treat yourself to like a whole box of crayons remember getting new crayons when you were little I used to have a box that had a little crayon sharpener on it and everything too and I had this little I think I told you guys about it Crayola caddy and it was like I put all my crayons on it and it was like a sort of like a lazy Susan thing that went around so I could pick any color and it, oh yeah I should get one of those um, but get yourself a big box of crayons or new markers or something like that and just make this poster and let it be something that you see regularly write it in your journal write it in your planner if not now when That's a lot to think about. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you guys tomorrow. Annabelle has dozed off and <laughs> she's treating the afternoon right. I hope you are too. Lots of love. Bye-bye.